This video will talk about visualizing data. Good analyses happen before and after you do statistics. So the start of our data analysis lifecycle might be identifying the problem. Then we might collect some data. Then we might process and clean that data. After you've done that, the first good step to take is to look at your data by visualizing it. We often call this exploratory data analysis. After you do that, you have a good sense of what you might be able to do in terms of statistics. Now we're going to spend a lot of time learning about statistics in this class. After you do your analysis with stats, then you can visualize your results again. So this is what we say when we mean good analyses happen before and after you do statistics. What are some tools that we can use to visualize data? But we'll start with categorical data. Bar charts. You've all probably seen bar charts before, but this is where we represent categories as bars. One example data source that we're going to look at with a couple of graphs here is this example of asking students what they use when they do online research. Most students said that they use Google or Google Scholar. Others said library data sets or websites. Others said Wikipedia or some other online encyclopedia. And so to graph that with a bar chart, we do something like this. The number of students is on the y-axis, and the categories, or the different online research sources, are on the x-axis. Now we can see that most students go to Google when they do their online research. The other way to visualize categorical data using the same data set are pie graphs, uh, or pie charts. This is showing the distribution of variables as a pie and the slices are sized by usually the percents uh, for the categories. And so here's the same data we just looked at, but it's showing the differences uh, in terms of those, uh, in terms of a pie graph. Now, that was the last pie graph you will ever see in this class. And we're gonna talk about why that is right now. As it turns out, pie graphs have the opportunity to be deceiving to the viewer. The eye does a really poor job in judging angles, which is why we'll avoid using pie charts. Instead, the eye does a really good job of discerning things like position and lengths of objects. And so this research has been done in the mid-1980s looking at which ways are best to visualize data. Uh, and so these two researchers found that if you were to organize data in these higher ranked things, like judging along a position on a common scale, judging along a position on identical but non-aligned scales, judging by length, those are really the more better ways to look and to visualize data. And so what does that mean? This means that things like uh, bar charts, where you're just judging the length of an object, turn out to be really valuable and really easy for the reader to do. When you start judging things like angles and areas and volumes and shadings, that can be tougher for the human eye to pick up on. And so ideally, and this is a tip for doing your own analysis, think about organizing things along a common scale or non-aligned scales, and then think about things like length. Now, some of you may uh, have done this if you've taken a statistics class before, uh, what we call stem plots or stem and leaf plots. Now we're moving on to quantitative data. And so now we've got an example data set here. We collected some heights on trees. So you see the data set here off on the left. What we can do with those heights of trees is to uh, separate them into the stem. And so everything between 10 and 20 feet 20 and 30 feet, 30 and 40 feet, and above 40 feet uh, might go in the stem. And then we separate out the leaves or the second digit within each of the data points. So those are the leaves, and then we'll just reorder them. And so by doing that, and by looking at our stem and leaf plot, we can see that most of the observations were between 20 and 30 feet. And just in, in ordering and kind of lumping the um, the quantitative data into these different bins, we can begin to see the distribution there. To quantify uh, or to visualize quantitative data again, we could do something like histograms. 
So here's where we divide the possible values into different classes or intervals, and usually those intervals are equal widths. And so again, here's a histogram of the number of trees in the various height classes going from uh, 10 to 19 feet, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, and above 40. And so you can see again, just like the stem and leaf plot showed, most of our data are between 20 and 29 feet. When we start to look at distributions like we just saw, it's helpful to have some adjectives that describe them. And so here we're talking about things like the shape of data, the centeredness of data, the spread of data, and how many modes there might be. So you can describe any, any overall pattern or distribution of the data by, by looking at this. When we talk about modes, we can talk about something being unimodal. There's maybe just one mode or, or one uh, area of the curve where the data are centered. Could be bimodal or multimodal. There could be more than one mode in the data. So another way to describe distributions is whether or not they're symmetric. And so when we talk about symmetric and data, uh, we're really talking about skewness. Uh, and so something symmetric might look like this. Uh, that is that most of the data are centered around some average value uh, or what we'll call in the middle of the bell curve. And we'll talk a lot about data that look like this throughout our class. The data might be left skewed or right skewed. That is the data might uh, not have many values at the low end of the data set, or they might not have many values at the right end of the data set. And so the data distribution might be skewed in that way. We'll also talk about outliers. And now there are specific ways we can actually quantify whether or not a data point is an outlier or not. But for now, we're just going to see whether or not some data sets or some data points in a data set fall outside the overall pattern of a distribution. Here's an example of uh, the number or the percentage of state residents that are age 65 and over. Uh, and so this is an important data set we might be concerned with. Uh, we have, uh, say, retirement benefits for, for those senior citizens over 65 years of age. And we might be interested in saying, okay, well, what states have the most senior citizens? Well, if we look at this distribution, it's interesting because most of the data are within uh, these values here. So between, say, 8 and 16% of state residents are 65 and over. But what's going on with these two data points off on the tails of the distribution? Well, we can look at those two and find out that Florida has a higher percentage of state residents that are over 65 compared to the distribution. And Alaska has very few residents relative to the total percentage of people living in that state. And so we can begin to identify these as potential outliers. And we may have, and we have opportunities to actually quantify whether or not those data points are an outlier or not. And the final kind of graph that we'll talk about are really time plots. And time plots are really just anything where there's an element of time, usually along the x-axis. And so that's what you're seeing here. This is what you're seeing with, uh, in this case, we're looking at the date of cherry blossoms and when they peaked in Japan, uh, going back all the way to, to 800 AD. And so what you're seeing here is those, those data points and then the date that the cherry blossoms bloomed on the y-axis. And so you can see the trend here going back centuries uh, and you can begin to wonder what might be happening in the last uh, recent centuries. So those are some common ways that we might visualize data.